Part 1. White Clouds. Verdant Rain Moon. Tower of Black Winds. The ceaseless rains that satiate the verdant landscape of Fodlan are accompanied by fierce winds and mighty roars of thunder. This abundance of rain, sparkling as it falls against beams of emerging sunlight, is a constant reminder to the people of Fodlan that nature is ever wild and unpredictable. For when the rain finally does take pause, the clouds part and give way to a glorious rainbow. I have a new mission for you, Professor. I would like for you to take your students into Kingdom territory to eliminate some thieves. They stole a hero's relic from House Gautier of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, the Lands of Ruin. Their leader's name is Miklan. He is apparently a disowned son of House Gautier. I believe it had something to do with his lack of a crest. Such happenings are fairly common within the kingdom. The Crestless cannot unleash the Goddess's power even if they possess a relic. Nonetheless, they are still capable of simply wielding those weapons. The hero's relics are immensely powerful weapons. We must meet this threat with adequate force. Unfortunately, most of the Knights of Seros are away from the monastery, purging the apostates of the Western Church. So we are entrusting you with this mission. After all, you wield the Sword of the Creator, which is more than capable of opposing any relic. The Sword of the Creator is a powerful weapon well beyond the other relics. You have nothing to fear. However, to ensure that no harm comes to the students, we will also send the Monastery's most skilled individuals to aid you. I must remind you that you are expected to conduct yourself in a manner befitting the wielder of that holy sword. Also, you should know that Professor Hanneman has been looking for you. That is all. Professor, I heard about our mission for this month. A thief with a hero's relic is worrisome, but with you at our side, I'm certain we can handle him. After all, you have the Sword of the Creator. It was allegedly wielded by Nemesis, the King of Liberation. If the legends are true, you hold the power to stand against entire armies. A band of thieves should be nothing. Even the most elite Imperial forces or the Knights of Saros could not hope to defeat you. I'm just marveling at the potential. Besides, your power does not lie solely in the Sword of the Creator. You are stronger and more terrifying than you realize. Professor, when we leave the monastery, will you still think of yourself as my teacher? <sighs> Never mind. I'm being thoughtless with my words. For now, let's just focus on the problem at hand. Good of you to come, Professor. I've heard much about you lately. Specifically, that you are able to awaken the sword of the Creator's power. Thusly, it seems the true nature of your crest has been uncovered. I had, of course, seen your crest before. However, at first, I failed to recognize its true nature. Eventually, it dawned on me that what is visible is perhaps merely a small part of a greater whole. In other words, your crest is too significant to be detected when using normal instruments. After this discovery, I began researching crests that might fit that description, which allowed for a temporary hypothesis. However, I could not be certain. The crest my conclusions led me to was far too unusual. A crest thought to have disappeared from this world in the millennium since the fall of Nemesis, the King of Liberation. 
The Crest of Flames. That is what you possess. Your ability to wield the Sword of the Creator has unequivocally proven my hypothesis. A legendary power, dormant since time immemorial and now resurrected. There can be no doubt that this ancient power resides within you. Ghost, perhaps? No, that is surely not the case. What is that look upon your face? I am no ghost, if that is what was on your mind. No. Uh, huh? Who's there? Professor, what are you doing here? Oh, perhaps I was talking in my sleep. Ah, oh, so you heard me then. Yes, it was a nightmare. I've had them since I was a child. Stupid, pointless dreams I can't control. It's terribly frustrating. No, they're just worthless dreams of the past. Talking about it won't change a thing. I had a feeling you'd say that. I suppose I could try, but only if you swear not to tell a soul. I appreciate it. I dream of... my older brother. Paralyzed. Helpless. My older sister crying for help that never came. The youngest babbling words beyond meaning. I see my family dying slowly, waiting in the darkest depths for a glimmer of light. I once had ten siblings, eight older and two younger. Such a large family, and yet I became the heir to the throne. Do you know why? Every last one of them was crippled by disease, or lost their mind, or died. I was the only one left who could inherit the throne. Things kept getting worse. The darkness kept getting darker. In the end, I was the only one who survived. The nightmares are a reminder to never forget, to never allow such terrible things to happen again. Even now, I'm the only one who can carry the weight of the Adrestian Empire. The future of the Empire, of everything, depends on me. Hmm. I shared more than I intended to. I suppose there's something in the air tonight. I've never told anyone about my past before. Please, forget I said anything. Sleep well, my teacher. This weather is unfortunate. Those villagers were right when they said a storm was brewing. But they were more afraid of an attack than they were of the storm. Let's end this quickly. The thieves have taken Conan Tower as their base. There it is in the distance. Niklon must be more skilled than your average thief to have overtaken a place like that. This area was the site of a massive battle several hundred years ago, when invasions from the north were at their peak. This tower was built for both surveillance and defense. It will be difficult to seize it. You know your history, Gilbert. If I recall correctly, you're from the kingdom, aren't you? I left my home long ago. If you have any questions about the mission, I'd be happy to answer them. House Gautier has always placed great importance on whether or not someone bears a crest. Margrave Gautier has two sons. A crest never manifested for his eldest. It's not hard to imagine why he left and wound up in this sort of life. There's no reason that crests should have the power to dictate someone's destiny. Don't you agree, Gilbert? He was just another victim of cruel fate. Forsaken by the goddess, 
who now demands his execution. The enemy is close by. We're almost to the top floor. They have nowhere left to flee, so the situation is in our favor. All we have to do is chase them down. Stay focused. Oh no. I will get the victory. I will prevail. That's my cue. As you wish. Put me in there. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. For Lady Edelgard. I still have a long way to go. in trouble. Hurry up, you fools! Enemies approach from the lower floors. Watch the rear flank. to be all I can. One more success. 
disappointing, but I will not misplace my heart. I'd rather be napping. I think I'm improving. It all comes down to this. standard. Ferdinand von Eyre. As you wish. Put me in there. I will prevail. Stay focused. I shouldn't strain myself. Ugh. Battle. Oh, thanks so much. Oh no.
Here we go! Attack them from both sides! It's an ambush! I cannot lose! As expected. Practice yields results. This is harder than expected. within.
bad as that? I'm no stranger to battle. Now's my chance! Cannot lose. You fought well. I'm not setting a very good example. I'd rather retreat. Sure. I owe you 
have thorns. Not quite what I was after. Put me in there! You think you can take the lance from me, huh? I'll kill you. I'll kill every last one of you! Research had such results.
Not bad for your kind. A bunch of spoiled, rotten children. Fighting such a thing? Then listen well to what I say. An evil power has caused them to grow quite large. Their life force is beyond a mortal like yourself. You cannot win unless you fell them twice, or even thrice. Even if you've cornered one, you cannot let your guard down. Those things are even worse when threatened. See that barrier? It is surrounded by great power. You must break through to fight that thing. A strong attack or gambit might help to break through more quickly. If you can break the barrier, that power will have nowhere else to go, and that will likely cause confusion for that thing. It cannot counter while confused, which means that is the best time to attack. If you break down all of their barriers, not only will they be confused, they will not be able to move for a short while. Without the power flowing around them, they will not be able to restore their barriers. You might even be able to get something from them. They have such might that they will not fear you alone. But a battalion could prove useful on that front. Attack them with a gambit to draw their attention and force them to target you. Be on your guard when they have realized their full power. The damage caused at times like that is not contained to just one spot. Once they have charged some power up, their barriers will be restored. You really must pay close attention to those things. Distract them with a gambit, or just take them down before they can attack. In any case, think carefully before you act. But you should be conquering that thing instead of talking to me. If you're out of questions, get over there and fight! Such is the fate of one whose life is corrupted by a crest stone. How pitiable. The least we can do is put an end to his suffering.
You require aid? It's time! I must retreat. Shall I help? Now's our chance. Beast is gone, yet Miklon and the Lance remain. It is done. Let's retrieve the Lance and depart at once. That man, his form was changed. It was as though that lance was swallowing him whole. Upon that sight, it makes sense that your students were upset. I wonder if those relics truly hide such power. Yet even still, that power seems familiar. That form as well. As one who wields the sword of the Creator, does that mean you possess that power too? Professor, you have returned. The goddess is indeed generous with her divine protection. I have already heard Gilbert's report about what happened. See to it that you keep what transpired at the tower to yourself. People would lose faith in the nobles should rumors spread of one using a relic and transforming into a monster. All regions of Fodland would fall into chaos. We must avoid that at all costs. Please ensure the students who accompanied you understand that as well. Have I made myself clear? His transformation into a black beast was nothing short of divine punishment from the goddess. Punishment for someone arrogant and foolish enough to use a hero's relic even though they were unworthy and unqualified. Of course, that is why we rushed to recover it. Sadly, we did not arrive in time. The Church will formally return the Lance to House Gautier, if you would. You have my gratitude. I can see that I was right to trust you with this. Please report back. I will tell you of your new mission for the coming moon at that time. I assume the Archbishop was pleased with your performance. Did you return the Lance of Ruin? I keep thinking about what Gilbert told us. Yes, Miklon was discarded by his family because he was born without a crest. Eventually, he became a masterful thief and gathered enough ruffians to capture a fortress. 
Right or wrong, he was a gifted leader. He could have been a great asset to Fodlan. What a waste! It's true that a crest can increase your magical abilities and allow you to wield the full might of a hero's relic. But one cannot measure a leader's worth based solely on whether or not they bear a crest. There are plenty of talented people in this world without one. People believe crests are blessings from the goddess, that they're necessary to maintain order in Fodlin. But the people are wrong. Crests are to blame for this brutal, irrational world we live in. Their power is granted only to a select few, whom we elevate and allow to rule the world. Have you ever wondered if the only way to create a truly free world is to dispense with the goddess and the crests? Do that, and people will have no choice but to rise and fall by their own merits. Lady Edelgard, I question whether you revealed too much to the Professor. Perhaps I did. It is true that our teacher possesses a rare talent. Even I cannot deny it. The ability to wield the Sword of the Creator is concerning. I've already explained this to you. My power alone is insufficient. That's why I'm borrowing power from those people. If our teacher can wield it in my stead, I believe that would be for the best. It's a risk. A dangerous one. You leave me no choice but to take matters into my own hands. Please excuse me. I can't hide from the truth. I can't do all that I must on my own. If all I can rely on is my own ambition, my path won't be easy. Is it so risky to reach out my hand? Father, I swear I will not stop until I succeed. My regret, my grief, my whole life, I've thrown it all away into the darkness. Professor, you have done well to complete such a difficult task. You have shown exceptional skill in leading your students. I am forever grateful for the safe return of the hero's relic. Just as I expected, you have mastered the sword of the creator. <laughs> now then, I shall tell you about your mission for the coming month. Re Archbishop! Seteth, what troubles you? Flane is missing. I cannot find her anywhere. Professor, have you seen Flane recently? I have searched everywhere. Where could she be? She may be in danger. Oh no, 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 what am I to do? Calm yourself, Sedith. Professor, we shall continue our discussion another time. <laughs>